On this day, in 1943, a sombre funeral cortege slowly filed into Lutwich Cemetery to bury 20 unfortunate souls. Two days earlier, with a handful of other souls on the 27th of March, all 20 had boarded a C-47 Douglas Dakota in high spirits, bound for the southern lights of Sydney. Little could they have known that, moments later, the plane and their bodies would be strewn throughout bushland just south of the runway at Archerfield, in what would be deemed Australia's worst air disaster at the time. Back on the 27th, at 5am in the morning, the flight crew of four took charge of their machine and carried out a very brief pre-flight check in anticipation of completing their run to Sydney with important radar equipment from Townsville. Anticipation was running high, as they'd also be taking on board 19 passengers who were waiting patiently in the brisk pre-dawn air. Two US Army personnel, including a major, an Australian Army Lieutenant, 13 RAAF personnel, mostly signals unit staff from Townsville, and three unauthorised WAF personnel who'd twisted the pilot's arm to quietly grant them passage south. Whilst the passengers boarded, a Lockheed aircraft decided to take advantage of the available runway and accelerated down the flare path, only to abort the takeoff and return to the hangars. A thick fog bank had developed at the southern extremity of the aerodrome runway due to the prevailing conditions. Anxious to get in the air, the C-47's crew threw caution to the wind despite having watched the Lockheed abort its takeoff run only minutes earlier. Accelerating down the runway, following the same flare trail into the pre-morning darkness at 5.11am, the flight crew radioed through to the control tower as they left the ground with a simple message of departed now, and with that brief communication, the Dakota and her passengers disappeared from sight straight into the thick fog bank. Moments later, the aircraft careened into the tree line just south of the aerodrome and slammed into the ground in a ball of fire, in complete ignorance of personnel who had just watched the aircraft take off. Given the prevailing darkness and fog obscuring the facility's southern boundary, further minutes passed before aerodrome controllers were notified by locals that an explosion had been heard south of the runway. Upon investigation, the very worst was revealed. The C-47 had gone down with the loss of all on board. It became apparent that after crossing the southern boundary of the aerodrome, the plane had banked steeply to the left. In doing so, the wingtip had come in contact with the top of a tree, which in turn sheared through the wing and dragged the plane over into a nose down position. Gravity and engines under full throttle had done the rest, ploughing the aircraft into the undergrowth at speed. On investigators arriving at the scene, wreckage was strewn over a large area and the bodies of the unfortunate passengers were located nearby the front of the aircraft once the fires had been extinguished. All 23 passengers had been so badly burnt in the resulting fuel fire that only one was immediately identifiable. An immediate inquiry was launched by the Air Minister into what had become the worst air disaster in Australia's history. On the 31st of March, the issue was raised in the House of Representatives by Air Minister Arthur Drakeford, with Prime Minister John Curtin adding that, to the extent it was possible for the government to make accidents less probable, the House could be assured nothing would be spared. As a result, the civilian inquest was begun alongside the RAAF investigation. After the resulting investigation, the RAAF found the pilot at fault. It was postulated that by flying into the fog bank, the pilot was forced to switch immediately from visual to instrumental navigation, during which he was distracted by the reflection of the craft's headlights on the fog. It was also argued by the coroner that the plane's steep bank resulted from the pilot's attempt to turn the craft around after suffering mechanical failure, as some witnesses claimed to have heard engine backfires just prior to the crash. American engineers testified that under chilly conditions, condensation could form in the fuel tanks causing engine failure, which could have been avoided had a full pre-flight check been undertaken by the crew. As a final note, the coroner stated that overall, Given the prevailing foggy conditions on the morning, the plane should never have been allowed to take off.